Hey everybody, it's Jason Blaha here, and it's time for another Breakfast with Blaha, and today I'm having uh, fat-free Greek yogurt, frozen cherries, and flax seeds. Alright, today I'm going to utter a term that we hear all the time, and that's doesn't matter what you do in the gym, it's what you recover from. Right? This is what makes us grow. Now, we could also say this is what we adapt to because it's not just about growth, it's about getting an adaptative training response. Right? We are trying to get better at something when we train. And hypertrophy is a huge part of that component. It's an enormous part of that component. But... It applies to max strength, it applies to endurance, it applies to conditioning, everything else. We can adapt to something if we can recover from it. And if we don't recover from it, it might have been somewhat wasted effort, diminished returns. In some cases, we get less returns. And a, a perfect example would be when you look at any of those German volume studies that were done. Um, so you have all these volume studies that were done on a bunch of experienced women and that matters because there's people say well why does that matter how's that compared with men uh, because it gives us a good idea of upper thresholds because on average women can handle a little more training volume than men do right they seem to actually tolerate it a little better it's not what i'm saying that's what the the experts say based upon the research so there it's good that you don't mix those together you need to pick one either men or women to study something like that because there's going to be a difference uh, regarding volume tolerance so in those studies what they found is that as volume increased muscle gain increased and when a volume reached a certain point muscle gains declined progressively as the training volume in the session goes up and this is actually studying hypertrophy over over weeks and months and it's not that they weren't recovering completely. It's that they were doing too much to recover from in total. And it seems to have inhibited the amount of muscle growth they gained uh, in the next couple of days after training. Not true overtraining because overtraining you regress, right? If you are overtraining, you actually lose muscle and strength. In this case, they just gained less. They still made gains. So when we talk about these things, well, how do we impact this? You know, what can we do to handle the recovery side? Well, number one, figure out your total effective volume. Ask yourself how many real work sets are you doing, ones that really count. And then I've given you guys pretty good guidelines for what we know that optimal range is. It's about 10 to 20 sets per muscle group no more than about 10 in a single session, right? Of, of quality work, in other words, a lot of exercises aren't full sets. They count as maybe half sets for a certain muscle. For example would be bench pressing your triceps, right? Triceps don't get the best stimulation in the world from benching. They get stimulation, not optimal. So we wouldn't count that as a full set for, for triceps. Uh, so... That's what I mean by volume. But we could also look at stimulus fatigue. It's much easier to recover from good mornings and back extensions than it is from a deadlift, for example, conventional deadlift. We limit the amount of sets we do on the really hard exercises that beat us up. We keep those sets low. We keep them reasonable. Picking more exercises that put us into traction and help with recovery, overall systematic and, and spinal recovery, right? We do more traction-based exercises. So what we end up getting with a lot of this is looking at things like stimulus fatigue. You'll see uh, Dr. Mike Idriotel talk about that a lot. It's one of his, his key points of conversation. Then we come over to what can we do on the other end to help with recovery? Well, number one is our food intake. You're not going to train with maximum volumes, with maximum workloads pushing the limit if your diet 
isn't on point. Usually as calories go up, nutrition quality goes up, our recovery is improved. A diet that's more anti-inflammatory helps with recovery. Right? This is what we want to do. Another reason why I like a lot of the restoration and conditioning work is that it, it increases calorie needs. If we increase calorie needs, we can eat more, we get better nutrition, and then we recover better. So there's a synergy there. It's a very important synergy. And then when we come over to some of those points, being in shape helps you recover quicker. Doing GPP work. We also deal with different energy systems with a lot of this so that what we did in the gym is recovering. So if we're doing a lot of GPP, in cases sled drags, barbell complexes, prowler pushes, weighted carries, tire flips, that stuff, GPP, strength-based conditioning work. We're getting another training stimulus that's using slightly different energy systems that recover different, so we're still getting more gains out of it, but again, another system is recovering. Well, that's a good thing because, again, they're not fully reliant on each other in that regard. So, again, a great combination. Plus, being in shape helps you recover. Uh, the restoration work, which would be all the really, really high rep band stuff and things like that that a lot of us do as many workouts or as circuits also in between workouts. Again, helps with recovery, helps with restoration, trains a different energy system, lets us eat more food, recover more okay sleep are you sleeping at least eight hours a night right that's kind of important and if you can't sleep eight hours a night then you have to look at your training volumes and training loads and go can I get away with this much can I get away with this much and you need to be honest with yourself about that regarding how much you sleep and rest it matters matters tremendously. Then we come over to stress management. Are you managing the other stressors in your life well? Because this is that's a big one too. If you're really stressed about work, family, relationships, the state of the world, it will impact your recovery. It will impact your cortisol. And if you're not recovering because you're stressed, you're going to get less gains. You're going to get less gains. Work on letting things go that don't matter. All right? It's a big one. Work on letting things go that don't matter. Get your stress sorted. Uh, work on thought processes for that. Learn how to unwind. Learn how to decompress from work. Take yourself out of environments that you have the option to not be in. All of that will impact your recovery and your gains. And we could argue that one is possibly one of the most important ones because we know that even affects how long you live. Kind of a big deal. All right, guys. Well, that's really all I have to say on that today. I hope it's been informative, and I will talk to you guys next time.